I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. <laughs> What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Quits Outside of Podcast. Once again, I'm Josh Shevinoff. As always, welcome by the one and only man of the hour, too sweet to be sour. Future Jiu-Jitsu world champion, my friend and yours, Angel Ortega. We got a lot of stuff to talk about this week. I know really a lot, but I mean, we got a, we got a fair few things. Uh, UC Macau went down over in China over the weekend. If a card happens at 4 a.m., does it happen? Um, uh, PFL 10. Actually, speaking of cards that may like, talk about attention, man, uh, this card. I mean, dude, the only MMA this week, and I feel like it's nobody's talking about it, the PFL World Title card, but we'll talk about it a little bit. We'll talk about some drama with them, as well as a bunch of other news, including some bad stuff involving Conor McGregor. But before we break into all the action, as always, you're brought to you by a few sponsors of the show, Rogue Energy and Elixir. Rogue Energy, keep it filled up with them at home, at the gym, or doing my job. They can help you get to the finish line as well with code SOUNDOFF. Check out code SOUNDOFF, all caps when you spell the brand's name for 10% off. Elixir, same thing there, man. Code SOUNDOFF. For all your Delta 8 products to get you really high. Hey man, Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving week. You want something to be thankful for? Be thankful for your elixir. Go ahead and take a few gummies. Eat some food, man. Have a chill night, you know? Um, yeah, once again, code sound off, all caps. The last uh, friend that we will mention is our friends over at Bed MGM. Guys, look. I don't know how many times i got to tell you. Uh, if you follow that link down below, you can get up to $1,500 in bonus bets paid back if you don't hit. Again, up to $1,500 in bonus bets paid back. You can follow that link down below for our friends over at BetMGM. Guys, PFL cards coming up. There is a little bit of boxing this week. Go ahead and follow them down below and have a little bit of fun. Contact 1-800-GAMBLER if you're having any issues. If you're not, though, and you want to go ahead and tail us and have some fun, go ahead and follow that link down below. Look, Angel, this this card, man, um, UC Macau, like I said, it happened at 4 a.m. You know, I, I woke up just in time on Saturday morning to see the main event live. Um... But I ended up, ha- ended up having to go back and, and watch a lot of these fights, obviously. Overall, the card itself was pretty fun. That being said, though, in the main event, Piotr No Mercy Jan. He gets back on track, defeats Davidson Figueroa by unanimous decision. 50-45, 50-45, 50-45 across the board. You know, I will say, I don't think 50-45 perfectly encapsulates how this fight went. I thought it was, a lot of these rounds were very close. Um, I actually gave the first round... To Davidson Figueroa, I think there was a lot of people online who kind of had that control time, who looked good early. Um, but Piotr Jan, just down the stretch, ended up outstriking him, especially in like round, you know, round three. He was throwing some just, some of those combinations. He started to find the flow. He just looked great out there, man. Uh, seen, and then round four was competitive too. But for the most part, man, just a Piotr Jan masterclass out there. What do you think, man? No, I mean, to be honest, I don't know if he was ever gone, but goddamn, it feel like he, he was back. It could feel like that Piotr Jan leading up to the title. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the kind of vibes and energy. Even the way he was talking, it kind of all felt like that. And to see that guy back in there was pretty fucking awesome, dude. And to have that wholesome moment at the end with his kid. Uh, and Davison, man, I'm not going to lie. I was a little let down. I feel like he early on, he committed too much for the first three rounds of wanting to get to the fight to the ground and take the back. And it just... Once he, once kind of Piotr figured that out, he didn't ever let it happen again. Yeah. And he was able to get up and stop a lot of the takedowns, at which point Figgy had a, kind of had the strike. I kind of wish what Figgy did in like the fourth and fifth he did earlier. Yeah. So, and then the fight would have been closer on paper, maybe even through the scorecards and all that. Yeah. You could see that he could hurt Piotr. You could see that he could land that power and at least tag him somewhat. Yeah. Uh, round four, he I believe he like wobbled at one point. I can't believe people didn't give. One, I can't believe people didn't want to give uh, Davison round four. Yeah, no, I I could I, both. I think he had a very good case of winning rounds one and round four. I, like I said, and, and look, if if anything, that's the one that I felt the strongest for, and that's the one round I gave him. I thought fifty forty five was a bit harsh. I mean, granted, don't get me wrong, I don't think the result changes. I don't think it should be any different. I thought Piotr Young won this fight, but I was you know I I thought that Davison won that round. Um, give him credit where credit is due. I mean, look, I think uh, the former champ of Flyweight did get stumped here a little bit, but he's not in a bad position to stick around and maybe end up at the right time to get the call up. Yeah. And there's several matchups that are interesting. Uh, he definitely didn't look old in this fight. No. So, and size wise, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I forgot how like I forgot how big Piotr was. Like he's not as uh, tall as some of these other guys in this division. So when he was in there, I was like, dang. Like size wise, like they're they're pretty much there even. So that was kind of a surprise to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
So what do you think is the, the next fight to make for these guys? I think for both these guys. I feel like both these guys are very in interesting positions. Natic at, at 135. And Pilar is still very young. So. So, so okay, I'm going to give you two things. I'm going to give you what I want to happen and what should happen. Okay? What I want to happen is I want to see Piotr Jan against Sean O'Malley. I think the rematch makes a lot of sense. Give him five rounds. Main event. Um, yes, and I think and I think they if, could co-main too. I mean, they're not they're that good. Yeah, I think if Figgy would have won this fight, he would have absolutely deserved a title shot. Now, I don't think there's any way they're gonna pass Umar. I think it's pretty clear what they want there. Um, mm -hmm. Which people shit on me anytime I bring this up, but like, dude, I mean, he got one ranked win and they put him like what? What, what is he now? Number two. From, yeah, so he's one ranked win. He's number two. Like they clearly wanted to fight for the belt. He's gonna do it. Um, if Figgy would won, I would have loved to see him fight for the title, but because he lost. I think you have to take a quick look at the rankings. I think an interest. There's a few interesting fights for him, but if you're, it's up to me, I think I'd love to see. While well, you can still do it, some Brazilian, just a Brazilian, just masterclass. Jose Aldo against David Cejudo. I haven't seen a lot of people mention this fight. I've seen some people say maybe they'll do Figgy against Cejudo, which I don't hate. That's kind of what I like. That's no. kind of what I want personally. Uh, flyweight so, versus flyweight, former champ versus former champ. I like that. I like. It's that. a good win for each of those guys. Like they put in their cap. I think that pro I think the most real that is the most realistic fight. But if you ask me, if I'm if I'm the matchmaker here, Figgy against Aldo, that is a rare opportunity for just an absolutely nasty fight, man. Just oh, absolutely man. sick. Um, give him five rounds. Do it in like a Brazil fight night or Ooh. shit, you know. Or I I don't know if they're doing a Brazil fight nights. If they're on a pay per view, give him five rounds in the co-main. I think that's such a good fight. But at the same time, I think the most realistic fight is Cejudo um against Figueiredo and then for Piotr Jan I think it's I think both realistically and most likely he will fight Sean O'Malley next. I yeah. think it makes so much sense that first fight was a banger a lot of people said it was a robbery I even gave it to Sean O'Malley at the time um which is kind of crazy because I'm not the biggest Sean O'Malley fan but I thought he did more damage in that fight I think you could obviously make a case for Piotr Jan winning and obviously it was a split decision so I'd like to see that one run back personally for you what are you thinking I'm on the same boat like literally the matchups you brought up are the ones that I want and O'Malley and Piotr Jan just seem so perfect to make right now that I think it'd be a misstep not to go in that direction. Yeah. It makes so much sense. I mean, Sean O'Malley, if he were to get a I mean, there was there was obviously been the talk about like what's Marab gonna do? Because timeline wise, you know, he doesn't really want to fight, but Umar does want to fight, so it's kinda like a little bit weird. Maybe we'll get a, a Sean O'Malley Marab rematch. Maybe we'll get Marab against Piotr Jan too. I don't want to see either one of those fights. Yeah, no, um, I'd be really let down if we ended up with a, a rematch this soon. Yeah, especially for Piotr Jan. I could see a Sean O'Malley Marab. I could see that being interesting. I'd be down for that, but I don't think it should happen. No, no. Um, Piotr Jan though is even worse. I mean, he got fifty forty three by, and that was. I mean, that's going to be two years in March. I'll tell you what, Sean didn't get fifty forty three. No, he did not. No, he did not. And he ended that fight with injury, so I can. You know, I could see how they could go in that direction. I still think the, the fight to make is obviously Umar against Marab, and that is a genuinely great fight. By the way, I know Styles makes fights, but damn, we got to give credit to Sean. Like, he didn't do that bad compared to some of the other people that lost to Marab. Oh, I mean, yeah, dude. I mean, Wall hurt, too. Sean O'Malley is a former champion for a reason. He is that guy, pal, and I think that no matter what he does next, it's going to be fun. Um, but yeah, he shouldn't be getting a title shot. I think the fight, obviously, to make his I mean, experience. I mean, there's a reason, man. Are you are what they say you are. A, a superstar. superstar. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, man. I love that main event on Saturday, though. We'll move down to the co-main event. This one less... You know, I got to be honest here. I did not pick Tabitha Beach to win this fight. I did expect she'd have more. I thought she'd offer a lot more Same. resistance. Um, Yan Jonan went out there and basically just tuned her up on the feet for 15 minutes. Um, Tabitha Beach looked a couple times for takedown. Couldn't really get it. Uh, could honestly mustered up very little offense. I remember after round one, I think she landed one or two significant strikes, something terrible. Like, so yeah, not very exact. Uh, not the, a good the strike night. differential on this is horrific. Yeah, not a good night for the for the baby shark. Gr granted, though, on paper it looks like it's a one sided beating, like beating. Yeah. But if you actually watch it, it didn't look that oh, bad. No. She just gave her a she just gave her a, a striking a striking lesson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looked, like, it looked like a coach fucking you know. Fighting his his protege. It was honestly kind of a letdown. Like it was a really was. really bad showing for Ricci, in my opinion. Look, like she was genuinely trying in there. Like she was throwing. She threw still like a hundred something strikes and only landed like was it like nineteen? She landed, oh, fuck me, fourteen percent of her significant strikes. She went seventeen for one hundred six. I mean, I give her credit. I said nineteen. I wasn't that far off though. But just to give you just to give you some perspective, I give her. By the way, I give her way too much credit. She landed zero significant strikes in Melbourne. She landed zero. So I sorry, to cut you off. But go ahead. Try to put that out there before I lost my train of thought. 
That's terrible. Dang. But no, yeah, no. It, it was it was an absolute fucking letdown. But for Yan Shan, no, perfect bounce back, taking it on someone underneath her, young, I think younger as well. Mm-hmm. Um, she did it in front of China, she did it in front of Wei Li. She kind of stamped herself in a position to create some sort of interest. And I'm happy that the UFC got to capture that moment because it's kind of like, damn, you now kind of see what you could have. You could still potentially do down the line, but kind of miss out on and as Yan Shao on Wei Li Zing fight that could have happened in China. They didn't have to be a pay per view. If they could have like, be honest with me, if this card goes down and the main event is Yan Shao uh, Wei Li five rounds and the co-main was Davis and Peter Yan, are you gonna be upset that that wasn't a pay per view, brother? I pay sixty dollars for that. Like that's a pay per view worthy. And the Chinese crowd was awesome. Shout out China on fire, dude. Shout out Chi- China number, number one. one. China yeah, number, number one. one. Y'all yeah. were amazing. Y'all yeah. were so fun to be part of. Like I'm so happy that they that uh, we got that experience there in Macau too. Yeah. So I'm excited whenever they go back. Yeah. Genuinely, obviously the time kind of sucked. I mean, it didn't, to be honest, it worked. Out, it didn't work out bad for me. I worked. Terrible. I worked out. I worked Friday night, so I had something to watch. Yeah, I mean, I woke up. Like I said, it didn't time to watch the main event. I caught like the last two rounds of the main event, dude. Like I woke up and I wouldn't even wake up that. I, I actually that rewatched early. this card yeah. twice. I watched it live, and then oh, my yeah. buddies went back and rewatch. We they restarted it from the beginning oh, yeah. and go. watched it. I mean, we skipped all the ads and stuff. It was which was kind of nice. Yeah, and watched all the fights uh, again. So it yeah. was. I got to see this card actually twice. I can't remember the last time that happened to me. Yeah, honestly, dude, I wouldn't mind if they go back, dude, go back to China again next year and just book a rematch. I don't give a shit. That first fight was really fun. Now, granted, it wasn't very close. But I think they're 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 hell bent on trying to get like that Tatiana Suarez version of Jenny Robo fight. I feel yeah. like they should just say like I'm sorry, fuck Tatiana for now, and just have Whaley fight right, Verna. But if they're gonna rebook that again at this point, just give Zhang Whaley something, dude. Like this shit is ridiculous. And I saw people people have gone at her on Twitter over the last few months. They're like, why does she only fight once a year? It's not her choice, guys. Like oh, also the division's in a very bad state. Yeah, they did the same thing to Leon Edwards. Like they want to sw- slow roll these people for whatever reason. If they want to fight them in certain markets or certain times of the year, if they don't think it's not enough contenders, yada yada yada. They'll put these people on the show. We saw that with uh, Leon, obviously. We've seen that with other champions in the past. Actually, can you even go to her division real quick? Like, uh, yeah, yeah, if you really look at it, it's it's Tatiana Suarez number one, banger fight. But they want it, They think she needs one more, so they try to book her against Virginia Jaroba. Those, those two are booked up. Jan Shonan, number two, coming off a win. Jessica Andraj, who I believe last competed uh, against what's her name? Uh, was it? Yeah. Okay. Green Silva. Green Silva. Not Elise Silva. Excuse me. And she lost in September. She's still ranked number four. Amanda Lemos, number five. She's already, she got 50 40 fucking tubed by Zhang Weili. Oh, yeah. And Zhang already beat Andrade years ago. Mackenzie Dern. She just needs to break through. She just needs to break through. But at the same time, though, when you see Mackenzie Dern fight, you don't necessarily think champion. You know? Not at all. And especially depending on the matchup. Like, I think. That's the issue too. Is I think a fight between her and Whaley would be a lot of fun, but I don't think it'd be very no. close. I think maybe. Granted, she, though, her, well, yeah. Mackenzie's last fight looked she looked very she sharp. Look if she good. can do that for two more fights, three more fights, and show that level that she showed and and that peak physicality that she came in at, yeah. she's single now too. I mean, so you know, she's on her single arc. Like she's gonna be dangerous as fuck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So yeah, no, like all of like. Of all those things coming together, she's able to do that and like campaign a really good twenty twenty five. Like title could look she's, interesting. She's ranked number six. She just needs one more. She, but the thing is, she's on the verge of becoming good. Like or, yeah, or like really like act, good. A, actually good. Like her jujitsu is good. Her striking is getting better. But it's like, can she like push it to that next level where it's like, oh shit, she is now separating herself from people in this division now, exactly. opposed to being in the mix with people in the division. Exactly. But right now, the win strawweight division, it's so good, but like, man, they just slow roll Whaley so much to where it's like, oh, and she's And she's one of the greatest female fighters of all time. Like, I gotta say. She, yeah, I mean, she doesn't get the credit because she's still active, and I think it's gonna take a few years to kind of like settle down. Like, she's, dude, she's- And she's one of the most entertaining female fighters of all time. Yeah, she's 34, she's 25 and three. She has two title defenses on her current run. She had one in her previous run, two time champion. She should have beat. She should have got one of those on Rose. <laughs> yeah, she two wins over Joanna, beat Asparza, beat Jaunan, obviously beat Amanda Limos, beat the shit out of Tisha Torres back in the day. You know, murdered Jessica. Like just, just so many good wins. So they got a soft slow roll in her. Give her a fight. They sh- they have to have her fight January, dude. Like give me something, man, because. She last fought in April. She needs to fight two times next year. I think it's a, it's literally a failure on the promotion if she does not fight twice next exactly. year. Exactly. And again, it's an entirely promotional issue. Let's yeah. just point that out. Like, yeah. this is not a Whaley thing. 
you know, so. If she does not fight next year twice, I will honestly be very, very let down. I will kill myself. If not. <laughs> we might have to cut that out. And it was cold. <laughs> and so moving down the card, uh, Muslim Salikov, man, this guy, a Chinese legend. Uh, <laughs> ends up getting the knockout of the card. Well, let me rephrase. One of the knockouts of the card. This is a really good night, dude. Honestly, Muslim Salikov just murdered Sankinan with a spinning wheel kick. Obviously, we talked about on the show here, his kind of like fame in China. That was a sick moment, man. That but was really cool. The fact that he got to do that in China, too. Who did he call out? Call the MVP? Oh, I believe so. Or yes. Wonder Boy? I can't even remember. Oh, man. I'll look it up real quickly. He had a pretty pretty good call I out. it was MVP, though. It was a good call out. I think it might have been. The King of Kung Fu. Regardless, either one of those sound really interesting. Yeah. I mean, I'm, the book came against anybody. He's still one of the most. He called out Wonder Boy. Okay. I got it wrong. Yeah, you call that Wonder Boy. And, that and that's in, a great fight, man. Do that one in China, too? Yeah, give me that. Give me that. By the way, I, if if we would have had to pick that fight, I, I would have picked him. Just so you oh, know. dude, he's not. he wasn't losing in China, man. <laughs> right? Anyways, uh, upset of the card. Gabriel Fernandez. A historic, historic upset win at UC uh, Macau, man. Wen Kong entered the cage as a minus 1,000 betting favorite. Dude. Minus 1,000. She was undefeated. Hannah Valtier loss in 2015. Gabriel Fernandez took her two rounds to drop Wayne Kong and then sub out the Joker uh, inside. It was quick, man. Like that whole final interaction to lead up, leading up to the end of the fight was great finishing sequence. Yeah. Yeah. Very impressive. Um, Wayne Kong. I I thought people were kind of overshooting her potential. real. Like they were really talking about her fighting Shevchenko right after she knocked out Victoria Leonardo. And I said last week, like, well, that's Victoria Leonardo. Yeah. That's what I said. Like, guy, it's like, no offense to her. Seems very nice, but Granted, She's a woman granted who's been though, brutally knocked out in five or six UC appearances. Granted, though, this could be her like Peloton moment in like when Pol- like pre UFC where he got subbed to. Yeah, and now she's like, okay, now I know, yeah. and then from here she can go on a demonic run. I think she could. She's still good. Like she looked good all the way up until the failure. Exactly. You know, until she got caught. Like that's the other thing. Like let's not get it twisted. She looked good all the way up until like the fight went south. But wait, Senko getting really hyped on the broadcast, like. Yeah. I'm like, Sanko, you got money on Grammy Love for it? All I'm saying is, like, did you, did James Krause email you? I mean, uh, oh, 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 oh. That according crazy. to Megan Anderson, they, they, they were real close. I mean, I'm just, uh, just putting that out there. People forget that one. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, but yeah, no, I don't Anyways. think the Wayne Kong, uh, <laughs> experiment's done. It, this was just a, uh, bump on the road. A bump in the road, and and we'll see what's going on. And also, like that girl just got that awesome ass moment, and hopefully she can ca- capitalize on it. Like people are going to be disappointed, man. The funny thing is, though, bro, you saw people like, man, fuck Wayne Kong. We got a, we already got her pulled up. Oh man, I already got her pulled up. Doctor Shi Ming is the future of the UFC. I don't care. Are you with a wall? She fought at UFC Macau, rode to the UFC finale, knocks out Feng Zhaonan, Zhao Can, excuse me, with a brutal head kick, sent her. To the hospital. They had to take her out on the stretcher. The doctor sent a woman to the hospital, Angel. Bro, the funny part is they're like, they didn't get the doctor in there. There's like, there's already one in there. Exactly. <laughs> she, she, you know what? She's so nice. She went over there. She started giving medical attention to her opponent, bro. <laughs> she's so cute too, man. She, 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 was, she was standing in the corner. Yeah, she is cute. She was like her, her in interview corner. afterwards, she was like, uh, I have bad eyes. My, my fans uh, worry about me because I'm small for the division. And uh, I have no, tes- I have low testosterone. Like it was really funny. Yeah, dude. She, Doctor Sheming is instantly. By the way, a top five. You cannot tell me that girl wouldn't be a killer at Adam Weight. Once again, dude, people were trying to shit on the fact that like Adam Weight will not be a good division. There is plenty of fighters Ooh. at straw weight that would go to Adam Weight. I, I would love. To and there's plenty of girls outside of the UFC who are, who are Adam Weight fighters who would be great. I would love to talk to the people that are like Adam Weight doesn't have enough talent. He's like motherfucker. Have you seen women's bantamweight? Have you seen heavyweight lately? Have I would do it. Heavyweight dude, lately? if we had to get rid of Bantamweight to have Adam Weight, I could live with that. I'd, it's a sacrifice that we are willing to make. Sorry, Kayla Harrison. You're going back to the PFL, buddy. Um, but uh, anyways, <laughs> yeah. Love Dr. Shi Ming. Uh, if, if She's the new Wayne Kong. I don't care. Yeah, I got to love it, though. People are like, man, fuck Wayne Kong. Yeah, Shi <laughs> Ming. <laughs> dude, it was the highlight of the card for me. Like I said, by the way, Dr. Shi Ming top five. By the way, we didn't even mention it. So she, her parents do not know that she was doing that that night. They believe she was at a traditional martial arts tournament, breaking boards, chopping oh, up shit. ice and shit like I that. Didn't know that. Her parents did not know she was competing for a UFC contract that wow. night. They believe that. that she was, like I said, at a traditional martial arts tournament. Well, shit, cat's out of the bag. I'm sure she's going to be making headlines in China, yeah, dude. dude. Yeah, and you got to keep an eye on her, man. Keep an eye on her. She's got 
great talent, fun story, fun background, you know. And maybe the UFC quits fucking around and we actually get Adam Wade around. Yeah, that'd be sick, dude. We'll see. Um, we forgot to mention this one because we skipped the prelims, but uh, Carl Solberg defeating Volkan Uzdemir. Kind of inching closer to potential Alex Gahea fight. I mean, I don't think he'll be very competitive if he gets there, but... You never know. You, know, you never you know. know. Shit happens. It's light heavyweight, man. Anything can happen. One shot, dude. One shot will change everything yeah. in that division. Speaking of one shot, uh, Zhang Mingyang defeats Ozzy Diaz. Brutal elbow knockout. Love to see that. Um, and he came the, in with it, right? Like, he was right in front of me and just literally threw it like that. Yeah, there. exactly. And then the rest of the card, there were some other fights. There were some highlights. Obviously, the road to the UFC. Like I said, their finales happen. Um... Yeah, I mean, not a whole lot. But there were Dude, by the way, knockouts galore. By like the way, that. that Dong Hung Choi kid was hilarious. Choi Dong Hung, yeah. Choi Dude, Dong Hung. Yeah. A flyweight. Yeah. Did, you, did you see that? Did you see his post, post fight, all that? No, I didn't. The celebration. Okay, so when we get off the show. Okay. All the, it was a good fight. Good finish. Do yourself a favor and watch that uh, Watch that aftermath. Did you Did you get any? Did you watch much of the prelims? Um, I tried to. So I watched like. I saw all the finishes, obviously, and then I caught all of Nicholas Mata versus Mahashate, and I saw a little bit of Carlos Ramirez. Good fight. Yeah. I want to say, well, Leonard Cavanaugh looked good out there. I highlighted him last week. Jose Ochoa, I got to give him credit. He looked a lot better than what I thought. I did not think he looked as good as he did. Granted, don't get me wrong. He, go- he looked good for portions, and then he really started getting hit a lot, and there wasn't too much coming back. Not Nothing consequential. But I can't remember if it was the second round. Or the third round. I think it was the second round. He had a big moment in there where he tagged Loner Kavanaugh, got to his back, mounted him, got his hooks in, and was and put in a submission. If that was a different point in the clock like in the clock or at the start of the round, it could be we could be having a very different story right now about how uh, how Jose Ochoa just came in and beat Loner Kavanaugh as an underdog. Yeah. Uh so just wanted to give uh, both these guys those flowers and give them a little bit of appreciation because I, I didn't see a lot of people talking about him, but that was a big moment in the card. Yeah. Yeah, man, it was a good win for him. Um, yeah, as far as like, all around, it's gonna be a hot take. Probably the best fight night of the year. Like, uh, genuinely, like if you're including Apex events and and outside. There was Apex another events. one that we talked about not too long ago that was like pretty recent that we said was pretty good. Yeah, we'd have to go. We'd have to go back through all of them. But it'd, it'd be hard. It'd but be this one was pretty good. It's a very memorable one. Yeah, honestly, it was pretty great, man. Um, I loved it. I loved. It. Yeah, I loved it, man. Um. Overall, great knockouts, multiple great storylines. Dr. Shi Ming, uh, future champ. Um, so, yeah, man. No UC this week. It, it, it kind of kind of just... But it doesn't matter because we come back to a fucking pay-per-view. We do. UC 310, Las Vegas, December 7th. Psyched, man. I'm psyched. I'm fired the fuck up. Fired up for that one, man. Especially to have... Man, I got to tell you, before we, before we kind of move into the PFL, I just want to say, Ian Machado Gary has won me over. I'll say Really, he's won me over, man. I, I've, I've won. You were never an you were never an Eden Machado uh, Gary hater. Though. I was never a hater. I was never a fan. In fact, I hated him for other reasons. I thought he was just fucking annoying. You know, I I just didn't like his vibe. You know, very kind of cocky guy. I thought he was kind of overhyped, especially when he first came in. I thought you know, thought, you know I will say I gotta say like it's kind of impressive, dude. Because I remember when he got signed and he fought and he got like uh, and he fought his first fight. I thought it was too early. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was a little, he, little, he, a little, not too much. Yeah, I remember he he got rocked and nearly finished by Jordan Williams. I think if he got like three more fights at the time in Cage Warriors and would got like he would have he would have been pretty solid. But then he came in, dude, and progressively he looked better and better to fight. And then on top of that, he showed a maturity of he is willing to win a fight. You know, yeah. not not willing to just like do the things he has to do to win the fight. He's not going to go could. out there and have a war if he doesn't need to. You know? Yeah, which I was like, I respect uh-huh. that. Like, I, I genuinely respect yeah. as a, as an athlete, not as, you know, not necessarily as a martial artist and a fighter, but specifically as an athlete, like, I can respect that. You know, get yeah. your money, get in there, and, you know, dominate the division, and hopefully along the run, get get some pretty sick moments. Yeah. And he's undefeated, I mean, 15-0, and 0, but just the balls to step up and fight, you know, Shaka Rafana. Because there were a lot of guys who were like, yeah. A lot of people were writing him off. I want to say, yeah. dude, like, don't be surprised if that conversation is like the other way. I know we're not premium this way, but I, I just want to mention him a little bit because just don't be shocked. Yeah, man. Yeah, I I think that uh, there's there's a lot of a lot to really to really like with that card, and particularly him in general. And that whole storyline, man. Because Shavkat Rabmanov is really just he's a one of one. He doesn't just beat guys; he changes their lives. And um, you and Machado Garrity step up and fight that motherfucker on short notice. Whenever everybody, like, let's be honest here, nobody wanted to fight Shavkat Rachmanov. And then the short notice thing happened. And then you had so many guys put their hands up. And I wonder how many of them put their hands up. And then quietly, whenever talks came around, they were like, mm, I don't know if they will. It happened with Kamaru Usman. We saw that publicly. 
So that happened with Colby Covington, probably. Both guys called to fight him. Both of them were kind of like, ah, you know, I don't know about the notice. I don't know if that's the right fight for me right now. You know, all that shit. So props to him, Machado Gary. I mean, I feel like he's just one of those guys that you don't want to fight on short notice. It's not because you're afraid, but it's just not a smart decision. Like, you cannot fight Islam Makhachev on short notice. No. And if you're doing it, it has to be such a big reward for you. And in this case, Ian Garrett, who's like, He's number seven, I believe, right now, Walter Wade. He's boom. young. He has enough time to come back from it. And boom, title shot if you win. Yeah. It's kind of a win-win for him because he is kind of getting all that praise. He's not it, taking so in. No. His risk, uh, his his losses are much smaller than Shock Lots, I'd say. Exactly. And But then as far as like, just I don't want to preview it, but just to kind of give you guys a little teaser for next week. Obviously, that main event is still like, it's insane, dude. I mean, Kaya Sakura is a bad motherfucker, man. He's he's, he's getting his flowers. I've noticed he's getting a little bit more of his flowers. The community's kind of coming around to it. They're not happy with it. But at the same time, I'm like, guys, let's not be ignorant. Yeah. Do you guys really want rematches this soon? Like, this is refreshing. And no matter what, if he loses, Pantosha will still be champ. Nothing changes in that regard. Exactly. And we'll get to watch whoever's next. Exactly. And one quick thing I'll add on. Uh, the UC310 card just made official earlier, I believe earlier this week, Chris Weidman, Eric Andrews, added to the other card. Yep. Catch weight at 195. Happy they're not making those boys cut weight that much. You know, I mean, they're still going to have to cut a little bit, but I mean, 195 is doable. That, that's not going to be much. That's not, that's, that's pretty doable. I saw Chris Wyman was like complaining about the fact that he didn't get paid. And I'm like, I mean, at least you're getting booked to fight in 30 weeks, you know? Yeah. I remember whenever Wonder Boy, they didn't pay him shit. And then we're like, yo, we're going to make you sit down for six months and then fight Chuck Todd Rafano. Because <laughs> he complained about not getting paid. But regardless, man, that's UFC 310. That's UFC 310 going down this week. Not, not this week. Sorry. Next this week. week. Yeah. This week. No UFC, no major boxing outside of a, a Misfits boxing card, which is happening before the time is uploaded. But Josh, we got the biggest happened. promotion in the world this week. Angel, Angel, are you excited for PFL 10, PFL World Championships 2024? Are you psyched? Are you are you fired up? The you, 2024 are, season, baby! Oh my god! You fired up? You got a phoner right now? By the way, we gotta we gotta address yeah. everybody. Dude, by the way, since last week, more fighters have come out. Complaining about the PFL and Bellator. State. Yeah, yeah. So we'll 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 talk about that right now. So the Pitbull brothers, right? Yeah. So more than that, man. So so the PFL, they have they have not had an event in a month. Um, the last event they had was oh, dude, that Francis Ngannou card. The canceled event. We got to address that because we didn't even talk about it. The Bellator canceled event is the one you're referring to, right? Yes. Okay. So Bellator had a card, France, right? Yeah. France? I feel like I'll lead into it perfectly. That's what I'm saying. Bring it so up. So Bellator was scheduled to have a card in France uh, earlier this month. Canceled out of nowhere. I believe, I believe November 17th was the date, I want to say. Canceled about a month ago. Patchy Mix was to fight on there. By the way, no guys. notice. None of us knew. Like, I even told Josh, I was like, dude, I forgot this was even going to happen. What did we even like? It wasn't like a public, crazy no. public thing that was known. No, I reported on it at the time for BJPen.com, but at the same time, like, there were no details. At the time, they just put a press release like, hey, fight cards off. Not happening. And that was there it. were no details given at the time. Okay? So with that backdrop, we're now going in. No, There's been no PFL event for a month. Okay? Last event was that France and Ghana card. We were all kind of coming out of it, like being like, okay, PFL, that was a great event. Here is your shot in the arm that you need to, that you've needed for a long time. Because you have the money, you have the fighters, you guys are showing what the fuck you're doing. For one night, you figured out what the fuck you're doing. And then right after that, they received to shit all over themselves. And uh, they canceled that Bellator card. Now they're going in to what should be the second biggest event of the year. They have the World Championship cards. They have all these tournaments, which nobody cares about. I'm sorry to say, nobody cares. But these are good fighters. Several of these fights are excellent fights. Saudi Arabia is paying for it. Use your big t- chance. What we're talking about this week is not the PFL, t- the, the PFL title fights. Instead, we're talking about the PFL because once again, they're fucking up. You mentioned it. The Pitbull brothers, both of them. Patricio Pitbull. The Bellator GOAT. Coming out and complaining about his lack of fights. Corey Anderson, who won the Bellator light heavyweight title, I believe, in February. He's saying, dude, I fought once this year. What's up with that? Why am I not fighting more? Several Patchy Mix, who was supposed to fight on that Bellator France card. He came out said, yo, like, dude, like, I'm being wasted here. Gay guard a while back. and We'll bring him back up. Gay guard sued those motherfuckers for not giving him fights. What are we doing here, Don Davis? What are we doing here? Angel, leave me your thoughts, man. I mean, I mean... It's just, it's bad. It's wild. But I do know through listening to another podcast that apparently, I guess all the big heads and all the people at PFL are getting together after the end of the season and going to make hopefully and potentially some changes, which hopefully those changes are getting rid of this fucking season bullshit, merging the rosters, adding a 135 division, and uh, 
and just taking it from there. I feel like that's just a good start to begin with. And they could still do tournaments, but just one single way tournaments. You know what I yeah. mean? So and this is just a shit show, man. And hopefully after the end of this year, we can see some positive changes for the PFL because they could genuinely do something very good here. And on top of that, appease the fighters they have because it would really suck for them to lose a lot of these guys. Because like I said, right now, they don't have a bantamweight division. And if these guys want to get out, like if they can find a way to get out of their contracts, you know where the fuck they're going to go? They're going to go to the UFC. Yeah. Probably. You know, or they're going to go where they can get the most money, at least. Whatever yeah. that may be. I don't know. I'm not sure where it's going to be. But more likely than not, since they're established, they have a lot of these guys that are complaining have won titles. Yeah. They could probably get a pretty, at least a contract they, they could, they're they willing to live with in the UFC. Yeah. And it doesn't help right now. I'll say this. I feel so bad for these guys, especially because not only are they stuck under the PFL slash zombie Bellator. Right? They're, they're not making money right they're now. They're not making money. Let's say you get your release. Where are you going to go? Your options at this stage. One championship who barely promote MMA and are in tons of debt. Ryzen. Ryzen who do, I mean, they do good shit, but yeah. they only promote like three major events a year at this point. Like, like, they, do, they do smaller shows. You know, they do co-promotions. KSW. KSW. M1 Global. M1. I mean, like, how relevant is M1 in 2024? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, they're relevant in the regions. That's the thing. Yeah. The yeah. point being, there's, especially in North America is basically what I'm saying. MMA as a whole is drying up. Every promoter outside of the UC. That's why you have BKFC coming through. You have Karate Combat coming through. But those are not MMA. Like, those are MMA adjacent. And you have a lot of former MMA guys there. But if you're an MMA fighter and you're trying not to leave North America, you're kind of fucked for opportunities, man. Um, and I feel bad for these guys. In PFL, you got to get your shit together. I, I, I've, heard, I've heard the same thing you did about they're going to get together, for, have a meeting this week. The fact that the meeting has to be had is just ridiculous. I mean, we're so far past the point of any of this shit making sense. They, you mentioned the tournaments. They're not going to stop the tournaments. They should stop. But PFL, stop your fucking tournaments. Nobody cares. Don Davis, I'm looking right at you. Nobody gives a shit. I'm sorry. Nobody cares. Nobody. You, it, like, you, you can try and set yourself apart from the UFC in a lot of ways. And that's what you need to do. But they're going for this. What, are the, what does Don Davis say all the time? Like they're, they're a co-part, the co-leader or some shit. It's like, dude, you're not the co-leader. You can't give these guys fucking fights. Also, MMA is going to... In these next few years, a lot of stuff's going to happen in MMA because the ESPN deal with the UFC is coming to an end. All this stuff's going on with PFL. One championship is... I mean, you see the direction one championship is going to go in. Kind a of, lot of these yeah. Thai shows, a lot of shows based in Thailand, a lot of Thai fights, not a lot of MMA. Um, So, yeah, no. It's, it's going to be interesting to see what plays out because I don't think it's just the PFL. I think it's everything exactly. in the MMA space going yeah. forward. Yeah, and, and, and I and it's just like even the you know, I said this on Twitter and and, and it's like PFL. They bought Zombie Bell Tour, they don't know what the fuck to do with it. They have no they clearly had no plan for this. Okay? No coherent one anyway. Mm-hmm. One championship, they barely promote MMA. The MMA they do they do is good, I'll say that. I mean we talked about, you know, Umar Kane winning, that was big, you know, it was a big fight when that happened. But they're doing a lot of Thai shit. Um, like more Thai fights specifically. They're I mean, they've always been doing Thai shit. Uh, but I mean, you know what I'm saying, they're kinda introducing it more. Even things like BKFC, BKFC, earlier this week, Mike Perry came out and said, like, hey, they're not letting me fight. I have three fights left in my deal, but because Conor McGregor got pissed off at me, they've shelved their biggest star. Like, what the fuck are promoters doing in the year of our Lord 2024? Have you guys just lost your fucking minds? Do you not have any clue on how to do this shit? Um, yeah, it's like even the PFL this week. They came out. They're like, we're going to have elbows. For the world title card. Which, like, which which I think is good because they don't do it in the season because that way they couldn't – there could be some correct. mishaps leading up correct. to the championship. Here's the thing. They're doing this big promotion. Elbows are here. Dude, you mean you're just having normal MMA? <laughs> and then and you're going to go back to not having elbows again in like three, four months? Like, what, what? I think all championship fights is what they said they're going to do. Like all – May, like any time I built something online, they'll do it. I feel like I'm uh, Prince Nazim Hamed after I think it was a uh, Chris Eubank Jr. lost. Uh, I think it was George Rose or whatever. He's like, "What camera do I look into to tell him to finish? What camera do I to tell him to stop?" Like fucking Don Davis, stop, sell the company, dude. Like you, like I've never hated a promoter more. I'm gonna be honest with you, because as bad as Dana White is as a human being, and as bad as but goddamn Don is he King, good at promoting Don five. King? These guys are terrible people, but they know how to do it. Don, Don Davis may be the nicest human being of all time. He doesn't seem to be. He just seems like a fucking executive who just wants to leech off of MMA. Uh, he doesn't give a fuck about the sport. They asked him, hey, Don Davis, what's your favorite MMA fight of all time? And the motherfucker didn't have an answer. He could have said anything. He could have literally said any fucking fight. 
This happened like three weeks ago. The motherfucker had no answers. So, I don't know. And it shows in the fact that you have people who don't like MMA or that are running the fucking I feel like show. if you're doing anything in sports, you got to have some level of passion for it. Scott Coker loved MMA. You know? Shachi Sichiton, for all my issues with him, guy loves MMA. You know? Like, these guys love the sport. It's and a big part of their it's lives. It's so shitty to me that the PFL is like the last kind of one standing and like they treat their fighters like shit. And they have a chance too. They have a chance to at least be a decent B, you know, B team, you know. They have Francis Ngannou, Jake Paul, Chris Cyborg. They have multiple, multiple big names. The all the boxers they brought into. Yeah, I mean, they got a Menace Serrano, Clarissa Shields signed, obviously Samantha Marshall. Like they have all these great names and they have the backing of the Saudi Arabia like UFC's working with Saudi Arabia. I'm not sure how much money they've gotten, but it's I'm damn sure it's not as much as the PFL's gotten. Remember back they invested they invested 100 million dollars, and they're apparently paying for the under like the underwriting as far as like all the Saudi events happening in Saudi. Like they're taking care of all that shit. So I don't know. Um, we'll talk about this card though. We'll break into the, the PFL card. Okay, this card has barely been promoted. Um, I've barely seen anybody talk about it. I had a curiosity. I looked up the Google Trends and you could see like if people look up PFL 10 or PFL, dude like. I looked up PFL 10. It's like 10K. There were it? a couple of results, yeah. I looked up PFL World Championships, which is kind of like the, like the under, you know what I mean? Like, they, that's kind of what it's called or whatever, like on Twitter, hashtag PFL World Championships. No results. Not enough people had searched it up for it to even register on Google Trends. I shit you not. So, here we go. We're doing this preview for the seven PFL fans out there, okay? Um... Which but, is apparently but, not but, Don Davis. Don Davis is not even one of those fists. By the way, it's gonna be a long night because they're all five, all the championship fights are uh, five rounds, and on top of that, they're not just doing their their regular season. They also have the the Mena, the European, which I think was a mistake. I feel like they could, they should have just done those cards on their own in their own regions because the whole point is to go to the regions, right? Yeah, and you're not gonna have those guys who are becoming champions in those regions fight in their region. Kind of a mistake on their part, I think. But I mean, I can see they're trying to have more title fights on the line. But I just, yeah, I, do I just don't. I just think that's a big mistake. Yeah. Uh, on top of that, they have some pretty good bangers on the undercard. I don't think they were needed because because it's a sixteen fight card, right? Yes. And it's night of champions. It should all turn all the fights just be champions. And if you're including all the PFL men on all that shit that I just said, you have ten championship fights, which is more than enough to suffice for a, for a fight card. Yeah. And on top of that, they could have had these other guys who are on the undercard that are banger fights, fought on a separate card. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. I mean, they they just they throw title. There has to be a title on the line for every everybody's a champion in the PFL. You know, like everybody's a fucking champion. Because they have the P they have the PFL, they have PFL Europe, they have PFL Media, they have the PFL Saudi Arabia, they have the PFL Super Fights League. You have five different divisions, and yet you can't book fucking patchy mix. They Jesus. Have, they have to they really have to simplify it. That's the other thing. They're making oh, it damn. way too hard to understand too. Yeah. It's like I'm And that really I mean, it's already hard for people to get into fights. You know what's funny? I was having a conversation with someone who's never watched fights, but thought it's cool. They're like, Yeah, I would watch the only issue, it's kinda of hard, you know, with all the pay per view stuff and on top of uh, Oh yeah, I mean you know. But uh, but for someone like like I'm saying for this person in particular, imagine on top of that that I have to explain to them, Oh yeah, in the PFL, there's the Mano division, there's Europe, there's super fights, and there's the PFL regular season. You know what I mean? Like it's already hard for them to get enough and like get into it as it is. Then adding all this other shit on top of it makes it even harder. They're like they're trying to copy the UC in so many ways of like in terms of like the professionalism and, and sort of like a lot of their branding or whatever. But like at the same time, you're not gonna follow like the easiest thing that the easiest thing the UC and does they're failing to in the other aspects. Yeah, the easiest thing that the UC does to digest. They're like, all right, UC Vegas 100. Shows in Las Vegas. It's on ESPN. You know what to expect there. They're oh, they just call whatever the city they're going to. They just do it that. Instead, we have PFL ten, PFL Super Fights Battle of the Giants, PFL Europe four. P which where's the city happening? Great, I though, don't know. The, if you're gonna do those names on those big cards, I think you're, you're fine. I mean, UFC used to do it at one point. We used to have what was it? UFC fucking. 79 knockout or some comeback, shit, you know? some shit like that. Like they can do that, but uh. I don't know, dude. I don't know. They just don't know what they're doing over there. But we'll talk. Let's talk about this break into the fights. Because here's the issue: they're good fights. They're good fights. Like this is a genuinely very well structured main card. I like a lot of these fights. We'll hit off on the main event. This this fight is an absolute banger. Brendan Lofnane, who has become one of the PFL, like kind of kind of their stars, really. You know what I mean? Just an incredible resume. Been in the company since two, 2019. Obviously, he came off the Dana White Contender Series. A lot of people were like he should have gotten the deal. He didn't get the deal. Um, 
since then he's looked great. Defeated a lot of UC vets in there, you know. Um, won the 2022 uh, featherweight tournament. Not even just that, he has 14 fights for this promotion. Exactly, he's a homegrown star. Okay, great fight here, coming off a winner with Kai Kamaka, taking on Timur Kaziriev, 29 years old, former Bellator guy, former I want to say like he fought a uh, fight nights like uh, M1 Global, I believe. Um, yeah, man, undefeated, 17 and 0, coming off a winner with Gabriel Braga. In August, great win there. I love this fight, man. Very good fight. Um, excited for it. I'm not really going to offer predictions for any of these fights. Just for the record, I don't really care that much. Um, but I, I'm going to talk about them, preview them a little bit. I think they're fun. You know, and if there's any that you particularly guys you want to shout out, you can just feel free to interrupt me. But, you know, like Dakota, did you, uh, Dakota, uh, I've never understood how to actually like this name. But Dakota Dichiva, I believe. Dichiva, yeah. Dichiva. Dichiva. Yeah. I just want to. I want to get it right because this girl is in, on the short list of like most entertaining women in MMA. She's, like she's also best one of the best twenty one twenty fighters on the planet. Like honestly, yeah. Former former Muay Thai, former Muay Thai fighter. She's very young. She's twenty six out of the UK. Thirteen and zero. Okay, thirteen and zero with twelve wins coming by way of finish. This girl. There's no reason why she's not a star. I'm just saying. Like, come on. This is she's entertaining. Game. If you guys haven't watched her fight. You should check her out. Yeah, this is also, by the way, I hate to be the one that says this, okay? Larissa Pacheco was never going to be a star, even though she's murdering girls inside a minute. Dakota is a genuinely attractive, well-spoken... No, 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 I'm not even joking here. No, 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 that's, but that's... That's, that's, that's that, one that, of the requirements. I'm yeah, sorry. that's the marketing world, I don't know, sadly. You know, that's It's sad, but that is what it is. PFL, why, why is she not a star, man? What are we doing here? What are we doing? Um, she's attractive, she's well-spoken, she finishes girls inside of a round. She's ridiculous. Yeah, so, me and her went in the same in that department. <laughs> one round? You finish one round? What, what, we got a fucking marathon runner over here, man? Shit. <laughs> Anyways. I'm not so, the only one finishing. I'll tell you what. Yeah, uh, shit. Uh, <laughs> it was Lord. a layup, man. It was what a layup. are we doing It was here, a layup. Man. It was a layup, man. Dick it's... joke hour over here, okay? Um, <laughs> She's taking on Talia Santos, though. That's a tough fight. Dude, I mean, yeah. And Talia Santos might have beat Valentina Shevchenko not that long ago. Yeah, here's, here's what we're actually going to go ahead and do. Pull up the odds here, because I saw these earlier this week, and I want to get it correct. Oh my god, they, they don't have? Do they not have a line for this? They don't have a line for her their fight. That's crazy. Okay, well, okay, well I'm on a unnamed website, and okay. it says minus three fifty five Dakota, plus two eighty Talia Santos. Minus so plus two eighty for Talia is what you said. Yes. Okay, that's insane. <laughs> just, I'm By say. the way, I'm gonna go check with our friends at BetMGM. If you want to follow and actually throw some money down on these fights, you can follow that link down below. Up to fifteen hundred dollars in bonus bets paid back if you do not hit. Contact one eight hundred Gambler if you have any issues. But yeah, BetMGM if you want to throw some money down on these fights. Man, Talia Santos. By the way, I have now found it. So our friends at BetMGM have it as a plus three hundred Talia Santos, minus four hundred for Dakota. Shout Man, out Bet MGM. I love Dakota. I love Dakota. Very high on her. That's insane. That's a that's crazy odds. Um, I'd take Talia at those odds. I'm gonna put it like that, man. That is that's does, does that necessarily mean though you think that uh Dakota's not gonna win though? Uh, or, do you, or you just think those odds are too good to miss out on? I think those odds are too good to miss out on, and I will also say that I am picking Talia Santos if I have to give a prediction. Ooh. I think Talia Santos is arguably the greatest women's flyweight on the planet. She had she's one of them for sure. I mean, dude, she might be her it, though. You're not wrong. Like, I thought she beat Chevchenko, and then I believe she also had a split decision. No, it was a unanimous decision against Aaron Blanchard. But that fight was a war over in Singapore. People forget that one. The fact that she, she was, was coming cut, back from injury too, and all that. The like, fact that she was cut after that is just incomprehensible. I mean, I I still don't fully understand what happened there. Um, I know she didn't request to be cut. I know that she's had some personal drama. Like allegedly, she didn't pay a coach. But like, God, when has that ever been an issue? I mean, <laughs> typically, you get rewarded with a title shot if you're Colby Covington. But I mean, in this case, Jesus. But, no, but jokes aside, Talia Santos, man, uh, I think she might win this fight. She's coming off a win over Luis Carmouche. I love that fight, man. So excited to see Talia Santos back. By the way, dude, this guy, Let's this talk guy. About it. Let's break it, dude. I never, fight. you never would have thought of both of them. Both of them, actually, it's actually so funny yeah. if you've kept up with both of these guys' careers. Impa Kazaganai, who's, if you guys don't know, that viral knockout of the fucking crazy kick with Joaquin Buckley. If somehow you're in this space and you've never seen that, then I don't know what to tell you. Against Yags Shemurodov. Dude. We love Yags here, man. We love Yags here. When Yags first came to Bellator, we were kind of like, man, I think he's going to make some waves. And he 
and a little bit there he has some stumps and then he kind of pieced it back together somehow man like it is the craziest thing in the world and he showed i mean he had potential no matter what i thought yags was actually a good fighter it was just a matter of like Wait. things falling into the right place you know him getting to that position dude this guy might become fucking champion yeah it's such an underrated story right i mean he came in to he was a part in that bellator light heavyweight grand prix with like all big names and everybody was like shit who is this yags guy we did our, our due diligence. Also, he's from an untapped him. region. Like, he's from yeah. Turkmenistan. Like, this guy is not meant to be in this position, more likely than not. Exactly. Exactly. But he came in, Beltor, kind of mixed expectations. Some people thought maybe he'd make some noise. But then he lost. He got dominated by Corey. He loses to Carl Epperson. And then you're kind of like, damn, where do you go from here? 18 and 7. You know, you two losses in a row. He just rattled off win after win after win after win. One of the few guys that made that jump whenever PFL bought Beltor. One of the few guys to completely, completely benefit, dude. I mean, just... By the way, he got good wins. Rafael Carvalho, good win. Great Julius, win. Julius Inglikas, good Great win. win. And then uh, some other guys in here that I don't know too but, much about, but Simon Beyond, good win. Rob Wilkinson, massive, massive win. Massive win. But it, was that Rob off the roids, question mark? No, I was kidding. We got to get into that, but for those who don't know, Rob did pop for the for the peds. Yeah, but come on, man. We love Rob Wilkinson here. God damn, that run was shit. good too, man. I, I ain't gonna give, lie. Dude, I didn't give a shit. I did not I give a fuck. I did not care that Rob Wilkinson was on pedge because that dude, was a good run. That win over Omar Makhmedov, where he just... I mean, that he made him look like a fucking horror movie victim, dude. I mean, that's one, that's one of my favorite... Uh, I mean, hey, fun, for Omar, though, if he wasn't on some shit, I feel for the guy. Um, oh, Omar was totally on some shit, man. But, uh... Yeah, man, I love Yags against Impa. That's a great, great... See, this is the issue, man. PFL, what are you doing? Jesus. So, um, yeah, that's a great fight. Up at welterweight, also in the main card. Shimon Musafayev, 30 years young, the silent assassin, holding an undefeated 17-0 record, taking on Magomed Umalatov. Another guy out of oh, Russia. Wait. So, another Russian guy. on Russian violence. Not undefeated not records on the line. Not only that, these guys, these guys might just be the same person. It's both 17-0, both out of Russia, with former Samba Wait, though, guys. it says here Shamil is 19-0. Shamil, according to Wiki, so, so we I'm have going some off a wiki. I'm going, I'm going off a wiki. Okay, but okay, okay. I'm just gonna say. I wonder what the official record would be when we're shown on television then. Yeah, but regardless, two undefeated guys. Love that fight. That's fun at welterweight. The one I'm, I'm really excited to see our boy Brent Primus. How the fuck does he do it? How does he keep on finding he, himself in the? How does he keep getting back somehow? I mean, he's winning the fights. He he's, is. It's all him. It's all him. Let's just say that it's obviously all him. But like, this is this gonna, is like, this gonna be the coronation of Brent Primus finally? Like. It's it's a tall task. Like I don't think it's secured at all. But. You just you think he's done, and then he goes out there and just somehow, dude. Like, how old do you think Brent Primus is? By the way, I know, I know, he's he's like damn near forty. He's, he's got it forty, right? He's thirty nine. He turns 39. forty in April. Okay. So here's Brent Primus's record. Okay, so he obviously beat Michael Chandler back in June of twenty seventeen. Everybody thought it was a fluke win, right? He lost the title immediately back to Michael Chandler, but that was actually a really fun fight. People that never watched that one. He rattles off a couple submission wins. He faces Islam Mamadov, who was super hyped up at the time, nearly beats him. And you're like, oh, fuck. How's this guy that's still sticking around? He beats Benson Henderson, who uses the Alexander Shabley. And you're kind of like, okay, that's it. He beats Marnstar Barnaway, which is a great Upset, win. Upset, man. Upset. Faces Usman Nurmagomedov. He was a, minus, he was a plus 280 underdog for that. I just looked it up. Ooh. He faces Usman Nurmagomedov, who he ends up losing that one. But he had some moments. He stayed in there. But Usman popped for pet. Now they weren't pets. But, you know. He popped for a banned substance. So that's not even a loss, baby. And then after that, he <laughs> had, he's, like I said, like Yags, he benefited from the move. He's getting more active. He's a guy that was barely fighting in Bellator, dude. I mean, how many fights did he have? So he fought from 2013 to 2023. He fought 10 times. So in ten years he fought ten times. And Bellator. dude, this he is gonna be this fourth. is gonna be his fourth fight in Bell in PFL. Yeah, and also two submission wins. We'll, we'll see how he does. Uh, taking on Godzi Rabadon. Tall task, man. But let me tell you this: it'll be a it will be a very good feel moment if Brent Brimis finally gets to hold that title. That'd be sick, dude. I saw him talking shit to Michael Chandler this week. I'm like, man, those guys really do got some bad blood, though. Like they really because like, really you know he got he got the title from Chandler, but. Come on, Brent Premise is not like no. he doesn't look back at that night. He's like, "Fuck yeah, that was the night I became champion." Exactly. No hate, you know, yeah. but it's the truth. Exactly. Opening up the main card, Dennis Goltov. By the Popov. way, they're opening it up with the Biggie Boys, dude. Huh? They're opening it up with the Biggie Boys. Smart call by them. Smart. Call you think by so? Them. I think so. I think so. Um, yeah, I like it, man. I like it. Um, Dennis Goltov has had. He's had a good run, I'd say. Linton Vassell, Tiago Santos, Timothy Johnson. Those are all three good wins. I gotta say though. Is it just me or does Ole Popov's run seem a lot better though? No, it is. It is. I mean, Vassell, Davion Franklin was a hyped up guy. Obviously, 
small record, but still though he showed some great potential. power, very athletic guy. Steve yeah. Mowry in there. Linton Vassell too. So yeah, this one's Golkan Sakri. I'm in there. Yeah, this is a good one. And before that, Josh, he beat one of my favorite fighters of all time, Antonio Bigfoot Silva. Oh wait. It was in 2022. <laughs> I knew that, guys, but I just had to say it. Oh man, Bigfoot! What are we doing here? Man? God. Um, hashtag say Bigfoot. Hashtag say Bigfoot. Although he's he is saying right. Yeah, he hasn't fought in a while. I mean, good, he that, good. He good. had that draw against Juan Espino, which is like if you nearly beating Juan Espino, if you don't retire, <laughs> that, like that's a genuinely good win if you can get it. So just stop, dude. Prelims. Long as fuck. We, you said it earlier. The PFL Mina finals going on. I don't give a fuck. I will say, I will shout out some of the guys in the other card. Monty Barnaby against Alfie Davis. There Generally you know. good fight. There I think you know. Alfie, long time Cage Warriors product. I could be wrong in that. Nope, never mind. Long time Bellator product. I knew his name seemed familiar. Eight and one in Bellator. I think I want no conscious in there. Salim Trezibi, a heavyweight against like that. Abram. Uh, Bobbly. Bobbly from England. Five and oh. I haven't heard of him. I haven't heard of him. I was kind of really interested. Five ten, by the way. He's on that DC shit. Ooh, I like that. I like small heavyweights. Fighting, fighting at a Manchester top team. So okay, I have All some right. curiosity there. Jesus Pinedo, Jeremy Kennedy, Jan- genuinely a good fight. And then one of my favorite guys in all the PFL Bellator uh, mash, Costello Von Steen is fifteen and yeah. three. One of the best fighters on the roster, in my opinion, has had some. Uh, Bumps in the road, but I'm happy to see him back. He's bounced back. He hasn't bounced back yet against that John Salters loss. Which shout out John Salters for getting that win, man. Oh, that yeah, was a dude. tough. That's a tough fight, you know. At this point in his career, that was. By the way, like that was back in 2019. God damn. Yeah. He's gotten one back since then. After the Lima Lance against Gregory Babney and Bellator, this will be his first showing in PFL. Yeah. So maybe Costello's like, I see where I see where you gotta go to get fights, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm happy you highlighted all those guys, man. I don't have a whole lot to more a whole lot more to add. The only thing I'll say is um, the one guy I'll highlight, Mahansin Mohammed Sefi. This guy is an Iranian gold medalist uh Sonda dude, right? So he's six and one. His only loss came back in twenty nineteen in his debut against Rongju. Yes, it is that Rongju. That Rongju in his debut. After that, he took two years off. Wait, where is he? What what weight class is he? He's a lightweight. The 155er. Yeah. Is this guy right here? Yes, that guy. So this guy, he is like a gold medalist in Sanda, right? Won a lot of championships. He's one of those guys, right? Lost to Rongju, who at that point... Let me actually pull it up. I want to make sure... That I was 2019, too. Crazy. So he was 0-0 against 15-3 and Rongju, okay? Brutal start to your career. He lost by knockout. After that, he took two years off, right? He's just been building back up. Dude, he's small. He's 5'5". Five, five. Yeah. He's just, he's a little dude. He's a 5'. Dude, that's like... Dude, no bullshit. Yeah. That's fucking flyweight height, dude. Yeah. And he's fighting in the uh, the Mina uh, lightweight tournament f- uh, finale. He's a guy with a lot of potential. I'll say like Dude, that. his opponent is 5'9". <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fun guy, though. I mean, six all won six in a row. I believe five of those come by way finish. We'll see how he does. Um, I don't have any more closing thoughts on uh, this card. I like... I'm sure those regional guys have some potential. We just don't know a lot about them. I haven't put my research into them. But hopefully they can get out of their region and get into PFL. Because that's kind of the thing, right? Those guys are going to actually transition into the PFL, right? Uh, I think that's the intention for a lot of them. Right. We'll see. Um, Yeah, I don't have too many more thoughts on it. I mean, now that we're talking about it, it is a really fun card. It's a genuinely fun card. That's the the issue, that it's genuinely good. Yeah, and I think it might be. Like, all around, it might be their best like end of the year card because a lot of those cards have just had like guys were like okay these guys fucking blow like, they like the other side is gonna get blown out by the guy yeah, holding exactly. the belt or the previous tournament winner exactly we'll go ahead and move on though dude by the way what happened to lance palmer dude that guy disappeared off the face of the earth that's a that's actually a really good question lance palmer dude like one of the most forgotten fighters to never fight in the ufc yeah i mean like lance palmer was very fucking good lance the party palmer let me go pull him up uh I didn't even know his moniker was the party. Fun fact of the day. I clicked on Wikipedia, but just let me do the link. Thanks, guys. Uh, I mean, he's fighting in AC now. Tough luck, man. The end of the career of the PFL just went south. Yeah, he lost four of his last five. Got cut. All right, well. Damn. We'll see how he does, though. I mean, he made a lot of money. <laughs> so, he did. Made a lot of money, so good he for him. He did. He killed it out there. Yeah. Look, um, we'll break into the news. And this this first one. 
I'm not really sure what to say about it, but I feel like we have to tackle. Dang, it. we're opening up with this one. I mean, it has to. I, I mean, it has to be. Right? We can't end with it. It's too. It's too, too heavy. It's too heavy. It's too dark to end. It's too heavy. It's too dark, and I also feel like we should just get it out of the way because there's only so much we can really. say. We're gonna rip the bandaid off. We're gonna rip the bandaid off. Thank you, Josh. So Conor McGregor, who let's let's put it let's put it like this: this man has been on a nonstop binge essentially since losing to Dustin Poirier in July of 2021. You guys see all the same videos I see, okay? Um, I'm online. There's a video every week of Connor coked, presumably. Actually, he testified on the stand that he did coke. So coked out, I can officially say it. Coked out for like the last three years, every single week. You know, him or or he'll be at, uh, you know, Anthony Joshua and Daniel Dubois just zoinked out of his fucking mind, dude. You know, you can see it on his face. Since over the last few years, it's just been controversy after controversy after controversy, right? We had the Miami Heat uh, thing where he got accused of sexually assaulting somebody who was later found to have not done that. But that same night, he still knocked out the mascot. Who forget that one as a part of it? Uh, that was not a planned thing. He's supposed to hit the mascot once. He hit the guy like three times and like fucked him up, right? We have controversy after controversy with this guy. It all kind of came to a head earlier this week. Uh, Conor McGregor found liable. Liable, not guilty. This was a civil trial. I'm going to go ahead and emphasize that of a of sexually assaulting uh, Nikita Hand, a woman from Dublin, in December 2018. A few mo- a few weeks after losing to Habib Magomedov, um, and uh, found liable. And some of the testimony that came from doctors in this case, like the ER, um, you know, the ER doctors who saw Nikita Hand, paint a picture of a guy that uh, is a billionaire and knows that nothing can can harm. Him. You know, he, uh, out of control. Um, they said they'd never seen a, a victim quite like the condition Nikita Han was in whenever she arrived at the ER that night after it happened. So he's going to pay $250,000. Apparently, allegedly, he offered her a million and she told him no. This was to have it not go to trial. Because in case you guys have not heard, this is not Conor McGregor's first time being accused of something. Um, he's been accused, I believe, five different times. No criminal charges ever stuck. Now it's not, we're not getting into the specifics. I don't know if every single one of those were an ex- exact identical what happened to Nikita Hand allegedly, so on and so forth. Um, five different times. And I know in one case, like a couple of them were civil trials, which ended up getting dropped. You can put two and two together. Why would the civil case get dropped, so on and so forth? Allegedly, she was offered money and told him no. Um, ends up winning $250,000. So, yeah, I mean, that's the kind of the overview of the case. If you guys want to get into the specifics of it, you guys can look it up online. That's not my job here. Um, point being, the fallout of this has been way worse than I thought it was going to be. Uh, even in the the year of 2024, where a lot of people tend to kind of, I don't want to say don't believe victims, but like we're kind of in, we we went from they, the they, me. They, there's a lot of questioning. Yeah, we went from the me to like, uh, when was that? 2017, 2018, so somewhere mm-hmm. on there. It's kind of, Coming back full circle to kind of a lot of dudes just being like, no, I, I don't care the evidence. I don't care about the evidence. I just don't believe. I just don't believe. Which makes me wonder, like, what did you do? You know? But like, jokes aside. Oh, also, a lot of people have been misinformed on this. Like, people were like, why is she coming out now? No, she's been in the process of this. That is true. And she went to the police like a few weeks after it happened. Yeah. At right. least, you know, allegedly, you know? Yeah. Like, she, that she did, she go to the police right after it happened. And this has been something that's been, people are like, why did she wait years? This has been, she started this criminal process. She, like, she's been doing it for years she's been dealing with this for years correct and we'll also talk about something that was left out of the trial which i think is insane that this got left out in june few this, this trial was set i believe connor has been kind of and the judge actually accused i believe connor uh, i could be i don't want to misword this because it's like a huge thing but like the judge kind of implied that connor was booking fight dates and trying to get stuff set up so that way the trial kept on getting postponed so this is trial has been in the works for a long time. Apparently in, not even apparently in June, Nikita Han's house got broken into. Um, nothing was stolen, but her partner was stabbed and her house got all fucked also, up. Also, there's no connections to, from Correct. what we know of to Connor or Correct. any, or anybody in maybe some crime family or something like that. Correct. You need to emphasize that. Yeah. However, we also need to emphasize that another woman who abused, accused Connor McGregor in 2022 filed a civil trial. And her house, not her house, her car was lit on fire. Once again, though, also. Again. We do we not know. We can't. We have no, we don't know if there's any connections no, no. there. 
There's there's no ev- there's nothing yeah. that leads in that direction. Just correct. To correct. Well, I, mean, I have to emphasize that. But if two things happen to somebody that's been accused, it's kind of whatever. Um, point being, he's starting to face consequences. He's actually getting way more flack than I thought he would, which is a good thing, obviously. Um, yeah, well, you know, as, I mean, he, as a society, as people, we should hold people accountable. We you know? should. Well, it doesn't happen in, in, in America in 2024. Not really. But should it happen? Uh, yeah, you know, um, I think crimes are bad no matter what, who does it. And uh, no matter who they are, what, no matter how wealthy they are, mm-hmm. no matter what their political affiliation, we shouldn't give a shit about that. It's about the humanity of, the, of you know, just have some humanity, have some empathy. So Connor's getting a lot of shit. He removed from Hitman, uh, removed from Proper 12 branding, any sort of connection to the brand. He sold the company back a few years ago. He's a billionaire because of it. Um, but he was still like the front man of the brand, still getting paid for licensing. He's removed. Removed from Hitman Three, gone. UC's not commented on the situation yet. Just yet, but they're gonna ha- they're going to probably by next week. Dana will probably have to answer some form of question. He's gonna have to, you know, at the UC three ten press conference. He's would gonna you, have to answer something. Would you be surprised if Dana said no comment? I don't think Dana White's ever said no comment. That's what I'm saying. That's ever. why I'm bringing it so, up. Yes. Could I, you imagine if he actually doesn't have anything to say? Like he can't find something to say because you know. We know more likely than not what he will say will be like, you know, the justice system will do what it has to do and things will play out. He's going to say. But, dude, I'm, I'd be. But that's why I'm, I'm bringing it up because yeah. I think this might be one of the first times where he even is like, I don't know if I can't defend this, you know? Yeah, I think I think Dana White is going to say that he's going to let everything play out and we'll see where this goes. And he hasn't talked to Connor and yada, yada, yada. And that there's not <clears throat> any fights in the works for him, just to kind of reiterate. Could that. you imagine if he bashed Connor? Like went up there, he's like, "Yeah, we we're not Connor's yeah, not would, part of this promotion anymore." Oh, man, that'd be insane. I just don't think that happening. I think if this were a criminal trial, it would. But because it's a civil trial, there's enough wiggle room for guys to kind of like avoid. And I say guys like Dana White to kind of avoid having to deal with that. And guys as a, as a whole are kind of being like, "Oh, you know, I don't be- I don't believe it. You know, it wasn't a criminal trial." Like. You know, like all that stuff. So, you know, but even then, if it was a criminal there's trial, people defending uh, Connor who don't have the full story. Yeah. And it's very hard. Like, they're not informed. They're just reading headlines. They're going on Twitter. Um, they get their news from rap TV and shit like that. You know, you know so. You got to see those accounts, too. Yeah. The, this this whole dial, like situation has been a lot, man. Like, going on Twitter, reading some of these comments. I feel bad for some of the people who aren't informed. Even some women defending Connor and uh, and not being the, – they're also on that same page of like, why is she doing it now and this, this, and that. Some of the same comments some men are making. It is actually very uh, very sad to see that. Um, look, I, I am a believer, you know, pro- uh, you know, everybody's innocent until proven guilty. It's looking bad. This is as bad. This is probably as bad as a good look. I think what I the, what I told Josh when I came in, and because we were, I I talked to him privately beforehand if we were going to talk about this. This is a yeah. heavy topic. It's something very serious. It could yeah. uh, it could trigger some people. It could really hurt some people, and especially if things come out and things don't end up being true on one end or the other, exactly. or more evidence don't come out and things are made very clear. Um, yeah, no, I you know we had to have a conversation beforehand because I wasn't quite sure how this talk was going to go when we did start talking about this. Yeah, and I'm trying to like kind of use a lot of um, a lot of legal speak because I don't want to get sued or anything, and I don't want to get in trouble. But the, the facts are the yeah. Facts. You don't want the Mac Life to reach out to you, right? Yeah, right. The facts yeah. are the facts. We found liable for sexual assault in this case. So I think, uh, but like, and it's important to me to emphasize liable and not guilty because they're two different things. Yeah, in, in civil court, you're not found guilty; you're found liable. So yeah, so. Like like I told Josh, like right before we started, I was like, look, the way I'm thinking about it is right now, if Connor was my friend, I don't think we'd be in a good place right now. Yeah. And, and, and for me, what it comes down to is I don't know how you can hear the testimony of, I guess I, it wasn't a film trial, but yeah, I don't know how you can read the testimony from the doctors in some of the ER, people who admitted her, um, and not feel some type of way about it. I, I've, I've you, If it takes you to imagine this, Imagine it was your mother. Imagine it was your sister. Do whatever you have to do to muster up the empathy. Because if you if you can't read what happened and not feel some type of way about it, I question. I just I just question that. You know. And for also for he was found fucking liable. So there's clearly enough evidence for the jury to be like, okay, this guy is liable for this for this victimization of this woman. You know. Um, but regardless, we're gonna move on. This is still very much an actor situation, and we'll talk. This about is not it. over. This is not over, but the slightest. To his credit, 
Uh, we'll be fair here. Connor did say, again, he did not do it. He's filing an appeal. He's doubled down. He's doubled down. His D. Devlin, who, you know. His D, wife. His his wife went out there and released a statement saying that she didn't believe her and that she's going to, quote, warn her children about women like Nikita Hand. So just, um, yeah, we'll see where that leads. Also, a few fighters have come to the defense of Connor. Correct. Hot file for Zeev, one of them. Sidney um, Kavanaugh. Yeah, although that one makes sense because like she's trained, you know, trains at the same gym, so that one's not really that surprising. But to make a public, but, but still though, I mean, you could Yo, you yeah, could be around like, someone not into, yeah. you know, and on top of that, she's a woman too, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's bad. It's I don't know really if there's bad. any fighters have come out on the other end in Batch Con. Well, well, actually, there there has been. It's oh, it's who you would expect, uh, Habib and uh, Islam. Dude, that Habib tweet from 2019 calling Connor a rapist. Demonic. Excuse me, 2018. I mean, 2019. 2018, calling him a rapist. That's just... Yeah, man. How about how about that one reporter, though? How about that one reporter right afterwards, right after Connor was found liable, who just... Mr. McGregor, you're a rapist. How about it? Just like... <laughs> fucking, that shit would never happen in America, man. I'm sorry. Uh, that's just so funny, you know? But uh, regardless... That's Europe for you, man. Yeah, man. We'll, we'll go ahead and move on. Uh, this We're not going to talk about this a lot. But we're going to talk about it because it's happening. Um, Misfits Boxing, this is, this is, man, this whole week has just been promotional malpractice, man. I mean, <laughs> fuck me. Oh, my God. So you have, so you have PFL. Dude, on, on the Connor end, too, because Connor's still promoting his shit. It's like, oh God, Connor, God. you're in the middle of this, like, legal situation. Yeah, Connor Rigger is op- posting, like, shit like, we got BKFC. Knuckle Mania 10. Yeah, you going know? down. It's like, dude, like. We saw what happened. Do you think we didn't see what happened, man? And then the next picture is Connor with his kid. (laughs) Yeah, dude, Connor is on a PR run right now. He's just posting pictures of his kid and shit. Just shows, you know, life and shambles. He released released like a statement yesterday on Twitter too. He's like, I I, I love my wife. I fucked up. You know, you you guys know. You guys know. Yeah, and then and then he was like, I'm looking forward to going back to the gym and getting set. It's like, yeah, dude, because that's the only thing you can do. You know, could you you imagine space where you can be? (laughs) Could you imagine if he ended that? He's like, guys, I will see you at the top. Anyway, so we got uh <laughs> Oh man, so jokes aside, promotional malpractice. PFL he, having a card. He needs to reach out to Michael Chandler. <laughs> he really does. Apparently Michael Chandler might be cheating on his wife too, if you believe that one Twitter comment. But uh yeah. Anyway, so PFL having a card, which if a P- if a PFL card happens and nobody talks about it, did it really happen? Well, don't worry, Mrs. Boxing is call, right up there, dude. Right up there. Because I'm they have their biggest card. Dude, you know what's crazy? They're in the Middle East too. They're going to Qatar. We didn't even bring that up. Oh my god, you're right. Oh my god, you're right, dude. The Saudis are just everywhere, the, dude. Everywhere, dude. Yeah, dude. Don't worry, guys. North American MMA and combat force as a whole is dying. Don't worry. By though. the way, we already know we're getting a Saudi event at the start of next year in February, I believe. Yeah, yeah don't worry though, guys. Saudi Arabia, Qatar—they're all on top of it, boys. Middle East is By the way, new rumor. Is he? Is he versus uh, Nasruddin Imamov? Nasruddin Imamov. Just putting yeah, that out there, guys. Putting that out there. So this card going down to Qatar is genuinely a very good influencer fighting card. Uh, we got to reiterate that for the people because people get confused. Yeah, this is not good by any actual standards of this is not UC caliber. This is not Beltel caliber. This is not, not PFL fucking Mina caliber. This is not the highest level of boxing. This is even regional level of boxing. This is this is a tier below. But we like this shit because like we like free show fights. We get to see some people that maybe we know. You know. Yeah. Um, some of these guys have actually developed some skills and gotten better at their level. And some of these guys have cool backstories. They have cool, like, you know, like, they kind of, like, build these guys up like they're WWE characters in some ways. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, at the main event... It's better than Power Slap. Oh, fuck, dude. Are they, the, they're about the, the shit same. I took this morning. Dude, are they Power about... Slap dude, too, are they about know? the same? How, we never talked about it. How, are, how close are... Boxing is so far above... Pa- dude, Power Damn. Slap. Damn. Power Slap. Damn, let them know, Josh. Dude, Power Slap is the bottom barrel of Combat Force. By bottom of the barrel, I mean, it's like below the fucking sea it's like it's so far it is like you know come on dude you, you you're telling me crazy hawaii versus tuna fish is and for the for the title for the bacon heavyweight title you know how i know dana white's a wa- just a washed <laughs> fucking dude you know i just know dana white's washes the promoter because this dude has the possibility to go out there you are a billionaire you can do whatever you want okay you can start out any fucking league kickboxing boxing apparently he says he's gonna get into boxing but he's been saying that for eight years now wish i had sufa muay thai dude you see how good muay, muay thai is out dude, there we could have muay thai we could have anything but he said he's like 
oh, yeah, I want to see their crazy Hawaiian slap a guy a couple times. Like, a couple times, doing? it was going to take one with those big motherfuckers. And then that motherfucker, like, he doesn't, dude, he barely, he couldn't remember. Remember last fucking year, whenever he was promoting UC 294, he couldn't remember Islam Makachev's name, but yet we're going to pay Tom Brady to show up to Power Slap 5? What the fuck are we doing here, dude? Oh my god. So yeah, uh, I'd much rather watch Mistress Boxing the Power Slap. I'd much rather watch, I, I don't know, Paint Dry, Dude, no, but I, go I, to the I, DMV. I, I will say, Power Slap is my dirty pleasure. Every now and then I will watch it. And and, and also want to enjoy it. But, does that mean it's necessarily a good thing? <laughs> I will admit. I will admit. I will watch it every now and then. As a guilty. Don't tell me you haven't watched it every now and then at a guilty pleasure. No, I haven't. dude. I ev- saw the first event and I'm like, that's it for me. I've seen some clips on Twitter. Is Dude. Paige Van Zandt still there? Uh, yeah, she had a she had a match not too long ago, Josh. So I'm not funny. sure if you watched. That's so, that's funny. That's so funny. I mean, I've seen a lot of Paige Van Zandt content. It didn't make a lot of waves though. Her second match didn't make a lot of waves like her first one did. But I guess it's because the first one was her comeback. Well, because Power Slap is at that point now where like I don't even think people watch to make fun of it. I think there's just what it is, what it is. You know what I mean? It's gonna, the thing, it's the thing is money. though, I think they're getting views though on Rumble though, which is crazy. They're gonna get well, they're gonna get views because like Dana White has discovered that in the algorithm, if you post knockouts, like the lowest form of people are going to watch this like like they're going to genuinely get invested not even the lowest form but like that's just how social media is in the in the year of our lord 2024 you know these are little second clips if they uploaded like alex Bahia knocking out yuri Projaka like right after he, he did that shit like the head kick earlier this year or if you're going to upload like i don't know what what's like a huge knock he's the max one they did that for max they uploaded, they, they uploaded that one to youtube I'm talking about no, that one on Instagram. That one, they get no fucks about that one. They no. wouldn't post that one everywhere. But I think if they did that for every single card, yeah, like they'd get the same numbers on Power Slap does. But because that's all Power Slap is, is these little snippets, like that, they're doing to do well. Point being, Misfits Boxing, Anderson Gibbs, Slim Alabar, good fight. Salt Poppy, King Kenny, good fight. Like that. Deji fighting a can. We'll see what happens. Deji, by the way, 20 pounds heavier than the can. Um, and Deji looking like me right now. Actually, I may be in better shape than De- Deji all the time, Jimmy. It's going to be on, on Saturday night. I'm not going to pop off the shirt, but I'm just going to say it's going to be close. Um, <laughs> nah, fuck that. And all, <laughs> uh, Nick just shredded. Yeah, dude. Actually, I I'm I haven't told anybody this. I've been working out vigorously. So, you know, in, in like three months, we'll, we'll do it. I'll, I'll do that. It'll be funny. Um, Chase Damore is going to be fighting uh, Kells. Luis Alcaraz Pineda on the prelims against Warren is actually a very fun fight. I like that. I love I love me some Luis Wasn't that supposed Kyle to fight? Life. Wasn't that supposed to happen at one point and it ended up happening? Uh, I think so. I think you were supposed to be... Or maybe it was going to be like one of those tag team things or some shit. Maybe, and it just fell through. Yeah. I will say they've gotten better. There's been no more tag teams. There hasn't been any of that shit. They've just had fights. And they had that event uh, back in September where they had like Benson Henderson. They had like the one-night tournament. That was good. That was actually very good. And now they're having another good card. Keep the momentum going, man. And it looks like KSI is probably going to fight the winner of this thing. So, yeah, you're in a good place. You're in a good place. Oh, I forgot they're even in a tournament still. Hold up. Yeah, so they had the the stake pro tournament uh, where Idris Virgo beat Benson Henderson to win. Right now, they have the MFB uh, cruiserweight tournament. Josh Bruckner, Tino Minicon, Le'Veon Bell, Mike Edwards set for some time next year, presumably. And then uh, a little cray cray, little crack cray cray against Yeti Gang. On I Saturday. also thought it was crack. You were about to say little crack crack too. Yeah, I almost was. Almost was. I'm not gonna lie to you. But yeah, I didn't I know. I, I didn't know it was pronounced like that until I heard someone else yeah. say it. Yeah, I don't got too many deep, more deep thoughts on it. By the time this gets uploaded, oh, look, that kid's a know, Golden so. Glove champ. Just so you know. Oh, cool. I mean, there's some dude. Guys you know, you know, bull, you know, bullshit. You know what his whole YouTube channel was? What? He would go on the street and ask guys if they want to box. Well, didn't Dean the Great do that too? Uh, no, he's made like music. I think. I, I thought. I thought he did some like street fighting shit. I don't know, but I know a little cray-cray, like, literally, like, he'd be walking, he'd see guys and say, hey, like, hey, you want to you wanna, you wanna box? and throw on the gloves. I like that. I like that. And then the guy ended up becoming Golden Glove champion in his state. That's sick. That's sick. I, lo- I like, uh, there are guys with legitimate skill. That's he, was scheduled, he was scheduled to fight, and then the guy didn't want to fight him anymore because he was Golden Glove champ. Damn. Well, see, that's why, that's why, like, they're, that's why it's so much better than Power Slap, because there is legitimate talent. Like, guys like Salt Poppy can genuinely box. Well, he's going to go just, pro. He said he's going to fight like two more times, two more of these Ami bouts or like exhibition bouts or anything to call. I thought, uh, are these not professional? No, they're not. Well, I know that they had some that were commissioned as professional. Some were, but I guess his aren't on his pro record. Like he doesn't have a pro record. Yeah, I looked into it. Yeah. Interesting. So he said, he said he's going to take on maybe like one or two more of these and then and then turn pro. Yeah. yeah exhibition boxing. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see how uh, how he does. I mean, he's a he's a genuinely not good granted pro. When people hear pro, people think pro at the highest level. Pro can mean he could go oh. build up a record, try to get to like this is 
Yeah. I mean, this is why I've never, I remember whenever Misfits first came around, there were people like the normal boxing diehards who were like, God, like, why is this shit happening? These guys shouldn't even be commissioned. They shouldn't be, God, these all guys are all terrible. Like, dude, there's like seven swarms on any regional boxing card. I'm sorry to say it, but like, just like guys who should not be in the fucking ring. So, also, I'm kind of like, dude, like, my whole base is if two human beings want to fight, let it happen. And, and plus, that they got doctors there, they got everything there. You know what I mean? You know what? You're, 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 but am, no, 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 no. I, am I not wrong? No, 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 you're not wrong. But this is this, this gets me into my political hot take. The hottest political take I have is that mutual combat should be legal in all 50 states. I agree with you. I, I uh, think it's insane that it's not. It, it is in uh, Washington, right? It's in three states. Mutual, I think, yeah, let me get this. Right. Uh, I think it is in Washington. I think it should exist too. If two people want to throw down, if two people want to call. I want to fucking throw down. You should be able to be like, hey, let's get a cop over here and let him work as the referee. And let us fight. And once it, because I think the rule is once it hits the ground, it gets stopped, which is kind of like, I get it, right? You know what I mean? But it's yeah. like, dude, how, how am I supposed to pull, you know, how am I gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw up a triangle at least. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, let me, oh, let me, because it's not legal in every state. Let me see. I think it's only three though. Okay. Okay. Let me rephrase. Texas and Washington are the only two. Texas and Washington. Look, dude. You got 48 states that got to go ahead and start being based. You guys got some time. That's my, my, politi- I agree. my hottest political take. I agree, dude. Because yeah. like, at that point, it's like, dude, they agreed to it. Whatever happens, happens. Yeah. What are you going to do? If you're going to charge, charge these guys for assaulting one another? That's not how that should work. They, they fought. They got it out of their system. They're going to live on the rest of their lives. Yeah. And then it's, if you have like a cop there or like some EMS dude, like, come on. Come on. You know? That's what I'm saying, dude. Like, humans fight. Like, it's a normal part of life. And then if they actually want to physically fight, let it happen. Yeah. I think we're we're not like the. I mean, we're combat sports fans, so I guess this comes as no surprise. Though, yeah, so. and that and granted, it's two mutual parties. Let me clarify that it's not oh, like yeah. I'm just saying. Oh, people out there want to throw down. They're coming at yeah, you. I mean, so it, be it. No, definitely, definitely no, no, not. No, but I'm saying like if two guys want to fight and like they're willing to sit for five minutes and wait for a cop to come, have them fight. So that's the way it works in Texas and Washington. So, um, we'll move on. We'll move on. Yo Romero. Let's talk about this. Mike Perry's Dirty Boxing is the newest MMA combat sports This was some promotion. fight club shit, dude. He tried to make this shit so underground. And, and it- I loved it. I loved it. So the only thing, this was not broadcast. It was like a very small venue. They had really nobody of note except Yo Romero, who weighed in. He was like a surprise guy for the main event. He fought Dwayne Crespo, a power slapper. It went exactly <laughs> what you would expect. Yo Romero just flattens this guy. Uh, I Why would you ever fight Yo Romero? Yo Romero could be seventy five, and Yo Romero he's Cuban. He might be seventy five right now. You can never pay me, dude. He should box Shane in the cannon. Oh my god, Shane in the cannon breaks against Yo Romero. You tell me you wouldn't watch that shit. Dirty boxing dude, too, put, Mike. Dude, Mike put, Perry, what are you dude, doing in man? a pride ring? God, come on, better. man, come on. Dude, I right. could totally see that fight happening in Japan. Yeah. Anyways, give me your thoughts on that viral knockout as well as uh, that first. I'm so sure you've seen other clips coming out of that thing. Man. It it's went just a, just as about like well as it could have like for the other guy. Like it went exactly as I thought it was going to. Yeah. You well, still a destroyer. Yeah, man. Oh, I love it, man. I love it. For in- Dude, by the way, Mike cucking us and saying that he was going to step in there against you all, which good thing he didn't. But if he would have, I would have been like, that's a real man. Yeah, I think legally he wasn't allowed to. He's probably not allowed to fight because uh, he still signed a BKFC. There's uh, there's times where I see fights and I'm like, yeah, that, those guys are real, man. Yeah. That would have been a moment. Yeah. Yo Romero is a real man. And uh, that fight, him fighting a power slapper, dude. It Can actually, I just say? But it was still. I, I was. Oh, fuck, I don't even. Never mind. Never mind. Maybe that other guy was just dumb. Okay. Okay. The other guy was probably just dumb. Yeah, that was just not a good choice. Yeah, just not a good choice. Hey, man. Like I Sorry. said. Sorry. Y- Sorry. No hate. That was just not a good choice, man. Yeah, you're. Remote. I mean, you're in power slap. I mean, that's that's also not a good choice. No hate. Yeah, I mean, I like how whenever they, I wonder if he's one of those guys that like before power slap, like whenever they like show because I did see some of the power slap. Show. He's like he's hitting the bag. <laughs> yeah, I I saw some of the power slap show and they'd be like, you know, this guy like Jeff fought an MMA one in one record and it'd be like Tony. Taco Bell employee, and it's like I wonder. I wonder. <laughs> just looking at his physique, he looks like he's more the latter. So fuck, dude. Uh, anyways, we'll go ahead and move on. Uh, two quick things to hit. Tom Aspinall has revealed negotiations. Negotiations are ongoing for his UFC return. He did not say who he'd be fighting. He did not say when he'd be fighting. But he said he's waiting on a date. He said everything's good on his end. John Jones gave an interview with the Schmo just a few days after that. And he said, "Hey, I'm in contact with UFC to fight as well. I'm going to be fighting in 2025." For sure. Once again, did not confirm it would be Tom Aspinall, but it looks like we're inching closer to this fight. Positive, right positive, positive yeah. stuff right now. Good very, call. very positive vibes, man. Um, 
Yeah, man, I want to see it. It's we got we got to see it. That's all I got to say. We've talked about this a fair bit. We talked about it a lot last week. Talked about it a lot the week before. So we're not going to send you along on this. I just want to confirm to people, they're in talks. So we're inching closer to something happening. Okay. So and I, you know, I still don't know how that fight would go if if it does happen, but I want to see it. Want to see it bad, man. So any thoughts on that? Um, before we go ahead and move on. No, man. Nothing outside of that. Is all that right. the final? Is it the final bit for the show? All right. Well, actually, no. We have one more. We have one more thing. It's the last one. Derek Chisora. The tagline is the last dance. Oh, my I God. Otto Valine, who's February. The, who's 8th. promoting this shit? Uh, fuck. I think it's uh, uh, Frank Warren. If really? Correctly. So top rank? No, uh, Queensberry. Queensberry, my bad. Top rank is uh, Bob, Dar- Bob Aram's old ass. I say that as a compliment, Bob. <laughs> Just a clarify, uh, right? If I ever do meet. Yeah. Yeah, Queensbury. Queensbury's promoting it. Yeah, February 8th at the Co-op Live. In I mean, it'll, it'll be good. I mean, I like Valine. Chisora's put on some bangers. I mean, so be it, right? The last dance, though, man. The last, the final fight for Derek Chisora. This is Jordan shit right here. This is Jordan shit, man. I, Derek Chisora, if, if this does end up being his last one, I think he's actually going to be one of those guys who will never retire. I actually don't believe him whatsoever. Um, But hey, man. It'd be 40, like the Melvin Manhoff dude. Yeah. But if he continues fighting, or if he doesn't, excuse me, your face. If he doesn't continue fighting out of this one, hell of a career, man. An all time action guy for the heavyweight division. And even just out of the ring, funny as fuck. Funny. I, I'll never, one of the earliest boxing things I remember was whenever he fought David Hay, and David Hay hit him with the glass at the press conference because they like got into a fight and he yes. hit him with like a, and he's like, oh, he fucking glassed me. He fucking glassed. Like, just like, he's losing it. <laughs> Can you blame the guy? Oh, no, no, not at all. Not at all. Um, but it was just, you know, he's fucking, he's so funny, dude. So, uh, yeah, I love me some Derek Chisora. I also love the Bob Valine, man. Uh, I thought he was going to do a lot better against Joshua than he did. I thought, I thought so, too. But, we'll but Joshua was back in that moment. Yeah, Joshua. I mean, I still think he can, you know, I still think he's got a shot at regaining the gold one day. I'm not going to look too deeply into the ninja blah, blah, blah. But he's supposed to actually fight you know, around this time. But apparently AJ taking some time off. So we'll see who Daniel Dubois is going to fight. Led, the rumor is Joseph Parker in February. So I like that. Well, oh, dude, did you see like that. this super crazy car that that's, might that's in the, the works one, for Saudi Arabia? That's the one I'm referring to. Now Turkey already came out and said that that's not the final, uh, the finalized lineup. He said that the main event is actually going to be something crazy. But are all those fights happening? Uh, yes, at some point, I believe. Holy shit! We've all better be. I think the only one has even even if they don't all happen on that card, those cards, are, those fights are in the works. Correct. Correct. Let's say if those are all on the same card, that was going to be yeah. The biggest card of Look, all time. Let me let me get the exact uh, comments before we bounce out of here from our boy Turkey. Uh, Turkey all chic. Because no bullshit. Would that have been the most stacked boxing card of all time? Greatest card of all time. Not a down the line. Yeah, they would have done that. I mean, they're not, but fuck me that it look insane. Okay, so he, here is the rumored card. The rumored card, Dubois Parker, Better Be B-Ball 2, Jerron Boots Dennis, Virgil Ortiz, Shakur Stevenson, Floyd Schofield, Carlos Adams, Hamza Shiraz. So, banger card. Incredible card. However, Turkey al Sheik responding, saying, wait and see. Do not believe anything until I announce. I hope to be ready in two days, and I hope the fans will like it. It would be a big surprise. Each fight can be easy main event. The fans are in my heart. So, shout out his excellency. Turkey al Sheik. Turkey al Jokes aside, dude. I mean, the guy. Riyadh season. Riyadh season. I mean, he's making, he's making good fights. And quite frankly, as a boxing fan. Um, and then we're gonna, dude, by the way, $20 pay-per-views, is that going to start soon? Yeah. Uh, that's still happening. I mean, that was uh, that was Joshua Dubois, obviously. And that one was 20 bucks? Fury Usyk. Yeah. Fury Usyk, I think, is 25 or 20 bucks. So I'm going to buy it. I'm going to I'm gonna buy it, too. Support yeah. the cause. Yeah. Anyways, man, anything else we go to talk about before we go ahead and bounce out of here, my man? No, man, I, I'm excited. I'm happy that you brought up, uh, we addressed the $20 pay per view thing because uh, I didn't know for a fact that that was actually going to go down. That makes me very happy because, and also for all the people out there, it's going to be 20 bucks, guys. If you have 20 bucks, if you can afford it, support the cause. Support the cause because it'll, it'll, it's a good thing. Exactly. It's a, it's a great card. Uh, they're doing some great things out there, man. So very excited. Um, I don't got anything else to, to go ahead and show, though, outside of our friends over at Rogue Energy, Elixir, and MGM, BetMGM. Go ahead and follow that link down below. Hope you guys enjoy the show this week. I'm at Josh Evanoff on Twitter. He's at AndrewTick underscore 01. Our court site sound for all things related to the show. Hope you guys enjoy the fights this weekend. Peace.